Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about hypercalcemia. So let's get into it. So first of all, as you could tell by the name, hypercalcemia. So you have too much calcium in your body. I wanted to review a little bit about what calcium is used for in your body. So calcium is very helpful. It helps form our bones and our teeth. It helps with muscle contraction. It helps with our normal heartbeat and blood clotting. So calcium is very important in our body. We just need to make sure that we have a safe amount and not too much. Calcium is controlled by two hormones. Number one being parathyroid hormone and the second being calcitonin. So what does parathyroid hormone do to help calcium? And it causes the kidneys to decrease the amount of calcium excreted in the urine, so it keeps it in the body. It has the GI tract absorb more calcium. It causes the bones to release calcium. And it has the kidneys activate vitamin D, which aids in that GI tract absorption of calcium. And then calcitonin helps decrease calcium levels by slowing down bone breakdown. So these two work together to maintain a normal level of calcium so it doesn't get too low or too high. 99% of all the calcium in our body is stored within our bones, which is why these two hormones play such a big role in keeping our calcium levels normal. What are some potential causes of hypercalcemia? Well, there's a lot of them. So the big one is hyperparathyroidism. Because that parathyroid hormone controls so much of the release of calcium and the amount of calcium, when you have too much, it's overactive, it's working a little too hard, of course it's gonna release more. Some other uh, causes could be cancer, tuberculosis, it could just be a genetic thing. Immobility, this one is big. I want you to think about our immobile patients, um, our patients who are otherwise healthy, but maybe they've become bed-bound, chair-bound, or they just don't move as much as they could or should. They are at risk for developing hypercalcemia. So we want to make sure that we're getting them moving every day, even if it's, you know, passive range of motion exercises, anything like that is going to be good for those patients. Those who are severely dehydrated, Sometimes it can be an effect of a medication. So an example, lithium can cause this as an adverse effect. Or you've taken too much of a calcium vitamin D supplement. You've overdosed yourself on supplements. So you have higher amounts of calcium in your body than you should. When it comes to diagnosis, it's pretty simple. It's a blood sample. We're gonna take your blood and we're gonna see how much calcium is in your body and we're gonna see if it's in excess. After we do that and we determine, yes, this is too much, we might want to do a couple of other things. So a chest x-ray might be done. This isn't really related to the calcium, but figuring out the cause of it. So the chest x-ray could tell us something like cancer or tuberculosis. That's why we would do that. And then genetic testing, because there is a genetic component to this for some people who get it, they might want to do genetic testing to see if that could be the possible cause. When it comes to signs and symptoms, a helpful memory tool is back me. So B stands for bone pain. As we know, most of our calcium is stored in our bones. And what happens over time is they start to weaken. So the patient will experience bone pain. The other B stands for brain. So brain issues, they might report things like confusion, lethargy, forgetfulness, a is for arrhythmias, C is for cardiac arrest, that's when it gets severe. K is for kidney stones, because remember so much of our calcium has to be filtered throughout our kidneys, it has to work harder, so it can cause kidney stones. And then also, as we jump down here, excessive urination, that's related to the kidneys having to work harder. And then N is for muscle weakness, very similar to bone pain. The patient will experience muscle weakness, wasting of muscles, and even muscle pain. So these are some big signs and symptoms you want to watch out for for your patient who has hypercalcemia. 
When it comes to our nursing interventions, of course we want to give IV fluids, especially if the cause is severe dehydration. We might want to give diuretics. We're going to monitor their calcium levels and all of those assessments related to those signs and symptoms we just talked about. So their GI system, cardiac, their kidneys, their neurological functioning. These are things we want to watch out for. And their pain, right? Because we talked about that bone pain, muscle weakness, muscle pain. Sometimes they'll say, you know, I have pain here on my sides, my flanks. That's common. So assessing for pain and treating that pain. Severe cases might require dialysis or surgery to remove their overactive glands, but that's severe cases. When it comes to medications, there are several different types of medications we might give that do different things. So calcitonin, that might look familiar from the beginning of the video, that was one of our hormones that we talked about. And remember what it did? It slowed breakdown of the bone. So it slowed the release of calcium that way. So it might be helpful to give to our patients. Bisphosphonates, I have a whole video on that, on Fosamax and bisphosphonates, so I'll link that below. Prolia, this is typically used for cancer patients. If your hypercalcemia is caused by cancer, this is typically a medication you'll be on. Calcimetics, this one is usually used for people who have hyperparathyroidism, so if that is the cause of your hypercalcemia. And then prednisone. Prednisone, of course, if we remember, is a steroid, so it's not meant for long-term use. It's short-term use and typically given to patients whose hypercalcemia is related to an excess amount of vitamin D. So lots of different options, kind of relative to what the cause is. But the big things I want you to take away here are those assessments. As the nurse, frequent assessments of the GI, kidneys, heart, neurological system, and for pain is going to be huge for these patients. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video were some potential complications of hypercalcemia. So those can include things like osteoporosis, kidney stones, kidney failure, and arrhythmias. So this is something that could potentially become life-threatening, so we need to keep an eye on it and we need to make sure that our patients are getting proper care and we're monitoring their levels. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.